Welcome to Monday Night Live on All Things Billy the Kid. Now let's join your host, Michael Anthony Giudicissi. Here's Michael. Hey all, it's me, Michael Anthony Giudicissi. Welcome to All Things Billy the Kid. I'm late and unprepared. Let me see if I can fix that though. Nice to see you all here. I uh, I was fishing, <laughs> so try that microphone out. That should be good. And there we go. Yeah, I was out fishing and uh, got <laughs> got back not too long ago. Had just enough time to jump in the uh, in the shower and uh, to look presentable for all of you. So thanks for joining me on this Monday night. A um, couple of uh, things before we get started. First things first, as you know. Uh, I put a message out last week that the show will now move to a bi-weekly format every other week. Um, I remember Fred the Woodworker told me something when he came out here to New Mexico last year. And he said, man, I enjoy the show, Michael. I don't get to catch everyone live. But uh, I'm worried. The only My only worry is you're going to run out of stuff to talk about. And uh, I don't think we'll ever run out of stuff, but the, you know, we've covered a lot in the last year and a half, 4th of July, which is next week, uh, will mark exactly one year since, uh, I hit 1000 subscribers and, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, we've, we've grown obviously since then, but that was really the point where the channel started to take off. Uh, but you know, there've been, over 200 videos since the beginning of the channel talking about all kind of all things of Billy the Kid. So every other week, uh, I will endeavor to upload a, kind of a, like a rerun video on the off weeks. So, and, and I will, uh, if I can work it out, I will uh, put the live chat on. So you can all still be here and, <laughs> you know, listen to listen to uh, an old version of me, old, old, younger version of me rant and rave about something. Uh, but we'll see if we can get that worked out. But we'll still be here every other week. And of course, all the investigative videos and those kind of things will continue. So there we go. All right. Uh, let's see who's here. Ray's here. I think he was first in. Sandra, Jason, Susan, Joy, Honeybee. Honeybee, my first live, although I've been catching the replays. Good stuff. Thanks, Honeybee. Steve, Colin, Misty. Hey, Misty. Oh, Misty here. Have a drink on me. Uh, there's Ben, Mark, Max, Steve 2.0, the other Steve from Capitan, Earl, uh, Go Go Gonzo. Love that name. HP Shifter, Tammy Parsons, Hap, Hey Hap, and Casper the Ghost Esquire. Esquire. Um, so that's got to be good. Uh, all right. So uh, we had a uh, a video that we did on the member section and really courtesy of uh, Brandon for providing a lot, really a wealth of information on Bob Ollinger's grave and or or maybe not <laughs> Bob Ollinger's grave. And uh, we did a members only video during the week. Uh, if you're a channel member, you can go back and take a look at that. If you haven't seen it, lays out a lot of info. There's maps in there and those kind of things and some, uh, you know, some interesting enlightenment. Um, if you're not a member, by the way, you can join. Just hit the join tab. Join for a month. Watch all the videos for a month and then then uh, bail, you know, whatever you want. Uh, but anyway, um, that got me thinking, you know, Bob Ollinger's grave. It is not confirmed where it is. And. I started thinking about the principles of the life and times of Billy the Kid and the uh, in the Lincoln County War. And I have come up with my list of the top five uh, lost to history graves of Billy the Kid and those who fought in the Lincoln County War. Um, and so I'm going to go over that with you. Now, you may have your own. Well, you probably will have your own. Uh, but I have mine, and since I have the microphone, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what mine is. Uh, let's see. Oh, Misty wants to know, how's the fishing? You know, I went bass fishing, and I didn't catch any bass. I caught two big northern pike. One of them was 30 inches long, and uh, catfish, kind of by accident. So that was great. Oh, HP Shifter wants to know, before we <laughs> before we get to the Billy the Kid stuff, uh, is fishing at Sumner Lake any good in the fall, winter? I've been in the fall. Um, and uh, I've had some really good days there 
largemouth and smallmouth bass. They get some schooling bass there. Uh, there's white bass in that. Like, I don't know it very well. I've only fished there probably four or five times. Um, but I do like it. And, uh, I like the, the, you know, the look of the lake and the, kind of the layout of it. So, uh, it's worth a trip for sure. Uh, large mouth and small mouth. All right, let's get to this. So I am going in reverse order, reverse order. Um, so the, uh, uh, the number one will be the most intriguing lost grave of Billy the Kid in the Lincoln County War. But I'm going to start with number five. And I'll tell you why. And if you're um, uh, if you are um, not in agreement, then tell me if you want to put your top five or your top one, then by all means, go ahead and uh, and put it in there. OK, number five. Un, uh, undiscovered or lost to history grave of the Lincoln County War is, da -da -dee, da -da. in my estimation, your friend and mine. Yes, it's Delavina Maxwell, everybody. There you go. Uh, there's Delavina's memorial behind us, and there's the uh, there's the young lady on screen here. Let's make this a little bigger so we can get a look at our friend now you might say wait a minute michael number five number five how's she not number one you spent the last six months looking for her um and didn't find her well that's true but here's the the criteria that i used is uh when you're when you're looking at an, an unfound or lost to history grave was it ever known and in Delavina's case, there were records uh, of her burial in the old Santa Barbara Cemetery in Albuquerque. And it's, yeah, I know you, you like the old story, hey, the records burned up in a fire. They really did. The whole building burned in a fire. So prior to 1940, I can't remember, 47, whatever it was, we would have been able to go look at those records and figure out where Delavina was buried. And... So that means it's lost to history now, but it wasn't, uh, I don't know, um, 80 years ago or so. And so the, uh, the reason that, that she comes in at number five is somebody at some point could have gone to her grave site, probably walked right up to it and said, here it is. Um, there would be some sort of, for lack of a better term, a plat map or something that and there probably would be a D Maxwell. And we would have known amongst all those hundreds of unmarked graves now that uh, where Delavina is buried. But the fire happened and she just wasn't important enough to, I guess, to anybody. <laughs> um, she's important to us, but she wasn't important enough at that time for anybody to, to try to... Uh, recover that um that information or save it for posterity for the future and so delavina comes in at number five um now i got some information late last week um i'm gonna i'm not gonna give you the identity of the person it came from but i got some information last week that somebody that not the person contacting me but somebody contacted them and said oh somebody else that I was friends with found Delavina's grave under a park uh, or playground at a school, the school right next to the cemetery. And so I said, okay, well, let's take a look. And I opened Google, Google Earth, and there is a school to the south all the way across Indian School Boulevard, aptly named. Um, and there is a playground or a park or I get, you know, whatever you would call it, a baseball field or something. And so, yes, there is a, uh, a park attached to a school and it's within, I don't know, hundred yards, 150 yards or so of the, the, the farthest South margin of the cemetery. So here's the thing. Um, my first question, m maybe yours too, is, uh, when did this happen? And the the discovery uh, supposedly happened in the 80s, 1980s. And I said, OK, well, how does somebody find a body under a playground? 
<laughs> right? Like, what do you, are you digging up the playground, finding it and then going, Oh, yep, that's her. Let me cover it up and not tell anybody that seems so far fetched. It's not even worth considering in the 1980s. I don't know that we had ground penetrating radar that you would even be able to, or that you would even know to go and find and go, okay, well, Oh yes, let me look over here and be able to see if there was a void under the earth that could be a grave. And then, and how would you know it was Della Venus? And if you had uh, some sort of documentation, and let me tell you that the person who purportedly found the grave was highly placed in the Billy the Kid world. That's about as detailed as I want to get. So uh, if you had uh, this information that proved where she was, why does it not exist anymore? Why does that? Why is? Why does nobody else know about that? Why did it have to come through some secret channel? Um, you know, to say, oh, my friend who is very publicly a Billy the Kid historian aficionado found found Delavina's grave and then uh, didn't tell anybody about it apparently, and uh, now it's gone. That's insanity. There's, uh, this is just my opinion. There's no way you would find a grave under a playground unless you dug the grave up. If you had some sort of records that said where the grave was, and it somehow was, I guess you, you'd need longitude and latitude, right? Or you'd need somebody to say it's, you know, 150 paces due south of the margin of the road or something. You would need that in order to identify where the grave might be. And even then, you know, you, it would be your best guess. So I am waiting further information. To me, it seems like just one more in the long line of people wanting to wanting to be in the know of Billy the Kid, and so saying things that can't really ever be <laughs> can't ever be proven nor disproven. Uh, but I don't think Delavine is buried under the school playground uh, on the South side of Indian school Boulevard. But I, Hey, if I'm proven wrong, I'll be the first one to come and tell you, I would love to, to find that. Um, but that would be like saying, Oh, I found Billy, the kid's grave. It's out in the middle of the desert over there somewhere. Well, did you dig it up? No. Did you have somebody tell you that it was there? No. How did you find it? Mm, uh, I'd rather keep that to myself. So there we go. Number five is Delavina Maxwell. All right. Number four, the lost to history grave. This one might be um, a little controversial. Yes, it's your friend and mine. Really, nobody's friend. Alexander McSween, barrister Alexander McSween. He's the number four, in my count, undiscovered grave of the Lincoln County War. Now, some of you might say, well, no, 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 no. I've been to Lincoln. I've been behind the Tunstall store. There's two markers and two crosses, one for Tunstall and one for McSween. They're buried right there, you dummy. Well, no, they're not. They're not buried right there. Uh, and that's pretty common knowledge. Now, are they buried nearby? The answer is probably. But even then, an exact location escapes most researchers and historians. Uh, right now, those graves would be on private property. And it would either be, you know, there's there's some talk, it's halfway under the shed of the house next door. Uh, when we were out on site with Drew Gomber, if you go back and you look at the sheriff, uh, the killing of Sheriff Brady video, um, you can uh, see when Drew uh, and Brandon and I were behind the Tunstall store, Drew pointed out a flat kind of recessed area to the east, to the northeast of the back of the store that uh, some people believe was a uh, another graveyard and there's no more grave markers there. So Alexander McSween is buried most likely somewhere in the, I don't know, the 100 by 200, maybe one acre from the back of the Tunstall store. But if somebody gave you a shovel and said, go dig him up, You'd be doing an awful lot of digging. There was, uh, to my memory, someone in uh, the early or late 1870s, early 1880s that had done some digging or excavating in that area and came across a, uh, a the remains of a person with a long red beard. And it was not me. <laughs> Even if my beard wasn't gray, I couldn't grow a long beard. Um, and that was a thought to be Alexander McSween's uh, 
uh, uh, remains, and uh, but no definitive marker of where it is. And McSween, the, yeah, here's the thing, I guess that gets me. McSween was generally well to do. I mean, he lost most almost everything <laughs> in his association with Tunstall in the Lincoln County War. Of course, he lost his life, but he was relatively well to do. He was well known in Lincoln being a, an attorney working on contract for Murphy and Dolan. Uh, before enticing Tunstall to move to uh, Lincoln and start his uh, his cattle ranch and his store and and bank, so that seems like a guy whose grave would be marked somewhere, and I don't know that it ever was. Now I can understand in the heat of the moment we're at the end of the five day battle, three day battle. If you're reading Walter Noble Burns' book, The Saga of Billy the Kid. Um, but the, uh, we're at the end of this five day battle. The war essentially is over at that point, but that, but the, the anger between the two parties doesn't just dissipate like that. And so someone may have thought maybe Susan McSween, Hey, let's not, let's put him in the ground and not mark the grave. I don't want anyone digging up my, my, uh, my husband's body, his decomposing body, putting a rope around it and, you know, hanging him from the, uh, from the porch of the, or from the uh, balcony of the, uh, the Dolan store. And honestly, I wouldn't put that past any of these guys at that point, as dirty and ugly as the Lincoln County war was. I, they, I think they might've done that. So I think maybe the, uh, the idea would be Susan McSween says, okay, I know where it is. And I'm going to wait until things cool down and then rebury him. But that apparently doesn't happen. And so somewhere within view of the back of the Tunstall store where that memorial, the little brass plaque and the cross are, somewhere that you can see, um, as long as your eyesight's decent, Alexander McSween is very likely buried. But we don't know where. And the owners of the property do not have any at, at least as far as uh i've seen and heard and talked to one of the i think i don't know if it's a gentleman that owns it or is renting it but there's no uh there's no thought or no no belief that they want to go searching for these remains and mark that grave it's private property they want to leave it the way that it is and so it's very likely that um unless there's change of ownership there that that grave will never be found so alexander mcsween number four on the uh Five most important unfound, unmarked graves of the Lincoln County War. How about number three? Who do you think? Yes, that's right. It's Pecos Bob Ollinger. And uh, for those of you who are channel members, you got a, a, an earful of uh, Bob Ollinger and where he might be buried. Uh, but I will tell you, his grave is not known for certain. You know, nobody can walk you up to it. And say it's right here. He's underneath the. Uh, uh, it's underneath the. You know my feet right now. Uh, interestingly enough, though, in find a grave, old Pecos Bob Ollinger has a burial at the Fort Stanton Cemetery, back of cemetery, last row, second grave from left end. That appears not to be correct. And if you've seen the Bob Ollinger uh, grave video, you'll see there is zero record zero none whatsoever of Ollinger being buried in the Fort Stanton cemetery um uh, and nearly the entire cemetery was disinterred and moved up to Santa Fe I think there was maybe only five civilians that were left there and uh so I uh, I guess I would challenge this uh whoever posted this find a grave of old Pecos Bob um because you would have to show me where it's documented anywhere that he was buried in that Fort Stanton cemetery. Um, oh, uh, Casper says in later years, Susan McSween here, let me show this wrote to the Coes asking where our dead are buried as she did not know McSween's exact plot. Um, yeah, she didn't know. And, you know, I, I, at that point, the, her house burned up the, her husband's dead. There's still, you know, hair trigger um, uh, attitude or, or feeling going around Lincoln. So, yeah, it's um, 
I could imagine that uh, she would be, be just be happy to have him, you know, have a decent burial. All right. Pecos Bob number three. And here's the reason that Bob moves in front of the others. Uh, and this is to me inexplicable. You think what you want about Bob Ollinger. You cannot dislike Bob Ollinger. It's not possible. You've never met him. I've never met him. I can't dislike him. I don't know the guy. All we know is what people said about him, what people wrote about him. So you may dislike the things he did, but you can't really dislike the guy. But that's a, an aside. Some people liked Bob Ollinger. There were guys that fought next to him in the Lincoln County War. Um, he had people that respected him. He was engaged at the time. He had a brother. Yes, his mother wrote some things about him that weren't very nice. Uh, but I'm sure every every mother has had something to say about one of their kids that may be uh, not fit for publication. But here's the thing. Bob Ollinger is murdered by Billy Bonney, who is the number one outlaw in the territory on April 28th, 1881. Okay. And he is uh, killed in front of the town of Lincoln. A number of people see it, see the body afterwards. You know, Billy is, is uh, by all accounts, spends an hour getting ready to leave. And, you know, uh, there's probably flies buzzing around Ollinger's body by then. Um, so a lot of people see him. Bob Ollinger is a uh, Lincoln County Sheriff's deputy, a legally sworn in law enforcement officer, and he's a deputy U.S. marshal, okay, which is uh, that commission comes along um, uh, from uh, Santa Fe along with, uh, you know, working with the uh, Lincoln County Sheriff. So Ollinger's got some credibility and some credentials, and yet when he's killed in spectacular fashion in front of uh, you know, many of the townspeople of Lincoln by the most wanted outlaw, the guy who's sentenced to hang in just a few weeks time, he's somehow dumped in the ground and nobody thinks to mark where it is. There is a Brandon sent me a ton of uh, information and I looked through all of it. We didn't present all of it on, on the video cause we'd still be uh, recording. Um, but there's there's not a mention of where Bob Ollinger, no official mention, nothing in a newspaper, no journal entry that states the name of the cemetery or where it was. And yes, while he may have been buried at Fort Stanton, although it certainly doesn't look that, yes, it's more possible he was buried at a private cemetery a little further away from Fort Stanton, quarter to half mile. But he could be buried in Lincoln, White Oaks, Mesilla, Palisades Park, New Jersey, or the moon. And we have absolutely no idea for a guy that so many people knew. And again, it just boggles the mind. Like, what did they do? Throw his body over a burrow, go up in the mountains, dig a hole, throw him in there, and then just cover him up? Nobody even took a little rock and, you know, scratched out B. Ollinger. There was never a marker. Nobody could go. No friends or family could go pay their respects to him at his gravesite. It's crazy. Now, I know this happened a lot during uh, the, you know, the, the westward expansion, right? The, you know, life was over. Everybody else had to move on. So I get that part that maybe we wouldn't use the same conventions then that we use today. But a guy is pretty, <laughs> pretty important to Lincoln County and pretty well known. And nobody, nobody uh, sees fit to mark where his grave is. And so today it is lost to history. Will it ever be found? Hmm, probably not. Probably not, right? Every day we get further from this, we get to, um, uh, you know, we get to a, a place where less and less people care. I mean, that's just the truth, right? I, I don't think there's going to be some <laughs> Bob Ollinger renaissance <laughs> in 20 years where, you know, people will, uh, hold up deities of him or something like that. Uh, we just get further and further away from the number of people that care and further and further away from uh, any surviving evidence. If there even is any that says exactly where old Bob is buried. So we have an idea, uh, but we don't know for sure, much like Delavina. And because of that, and very same thing with McSween. Because of that, there's no official headstone, gravestone, grave marker, or remembrance of old Bully Bob, Pecos Bob, 
Ollinger, who dies 28 April 1881 at the hands of Billy Bonney. All right, there we go. Now we're not done. We've got more to go. But before we go there, I want you to go here. Walk the most dangerous street in America with tour guide Brandon Dixon. Walk in the footsteps of Billy the Kid and the Regulators. Find out what really happened during the Lincoln County War. See all the sights, learn all the history, and relive the most dangerous time in New Mexico territory. Brandon Dixon brings it all to you in the most dangerous street tours. Reservations required. Call 972 358 5980 or email us at most dangerous tours at gmail.com. All right, we're back. Yes, the most dangerous street tours by Brandon Dixon, and now the most dangerous uh, street motorcycle tours, which is cool. I don't have a motorcycle, but can I ride? <laughs> if I can keep up, can I ride my bike like my 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 bicycle? <laughs> <laughs> oh, could you imagine guys wait up <laughs> anyway yeah check out the most now like now is the time um summer's here you've got time to get away um get yourself to lincoln if you've never been there or if you have been there and you've never taken the tour get down there and see all the 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 secret spots like the stuff you wouldn't know from walking past the museum and see uh, the behind the scenes info on the spots that everybody knows. Uh, Brandon can do a tour. He'll take you up to the uh, Tunstall murder site. If you want, make sure you're ready to do a little bit of hiking. He'll uh, take you around Billy the kid country on, not on his motorcycle. You'll have to ride your own um, or uh, up a walking tour of Lincoln. And if you got something special that you want, you know, in other words, you want, uh, Hey, I, I want to see this thing that nobody's ever seen. Well, ask him. He'll, uh, He'll, uh, he'll do it. He'll do it. And more. Oh, thank you, Casper the ghost. That's very nice. Um, uh, here's another thing <clears throat> that you should be aware of. We've got some really, really great news. Really, really great news. And that is our friend Drew Gomber is back, baby. He's back. That's right. Drew fought off the uh, the injury, the surgeries, the rehab and all that stuff. And he's recovering. And Drew's ready to get back out there kind of on the speaking circuit. Um, you know, he, he talked to Brandon. I got a message from Brandon uh, earlier and he said, Drew's ready to go back out there. So if you're looking for a, a speaker for your event, your Billy the Kid, your Old West event, um, your uh, whatever it may be, Man, by all means, get in touch with Drew Gomber or you can get in touch with Brandon at mostdangerous at gmail.com and uh, he'll connect you with Drew and uh, get Drew out there, man. Let get get him doing. He's got a lot of information to share and uh, we want to hear it. We want to hear it all. So go ahead and definitely do that. All right. So we're at uh, number three and now we're ready for number two. The number two undiscovered or lost to history grave of the Lincoln County War. Number two is... Yes, that's right. There he is. The man, the myth, and the legend, John Henry Tunstall, age 24 in 1878, killed on February 18th, uh, Tunstall Canyon, just <clears throat> on the other side of the mountains from Lincoln. And uh, if you uh, haven't seen the Tunstall Canyon video, you can go to the member section and check it out. Okay, so why Tunstall? Why is he not number one? Well, we'll get to that. But Tunstall is one of the most important and even more inexplicable than Ollinger to me that we have no idea where he's actually buried. So there's another brass plaque and another uh, cross behind the Tunstall store. And... John Henry Tunstall does not lie underneath that marker. So they buried him somewhere. In fact, it, it said Tunstall's buried in a lead-lined casket to preserve his remains because they believe that, uh, McSween believes that Tunstall's father, 
uh, JP, JP Tunstall, right? John Partridge Tunstall. Is that what it, what it was? Uh, Tunstall's father will want to have his son's remains brought back to uh, the UK and interred in a cemetery there. And that never happened. Now, I don't know why that didn't happen. I never talked to Tunstall's father. Um, I could come up with some reasons why for, you know, I could, uh, you know, think of some possibilities. One of the possibilities might be for his parents and his sister, it, it would be just too painful. In other words, to, to have to ha go through that anticipation. And this is going to be a long journey. You're going to take that casket from the ground. You're going to put it on a wagon. Then you're going to bring it to the railhead in Las Vegas. Then you're going to you know, rail it all the way to New York. And it's going to go on a ship. Like the anticipation of that happening, I think would just kill me. I really do. I don't, I don't think I could, I could do that for the months that it would take probably for that to happen. Um, so I think perhaps the family thought, well, look, that's the place that he had uh, decided to go. He seemed to like it there. I think we should allow him to rest in peace there. But yet again, John Henry Tunstall, unmarked grave. And uh, Ben said uh, earlier, you know, in that time, they would have maybe used headboards, which is true, wooden boards. And over time, these things just disintegrate and you can't tell anything. But but nobody from the time that uh, where there might be a headboard there said, hey, let me write down where Tunstall's grave is, because uh, that board's looking a little <laughs> a little sketchy. And so, again, Tunstall buried somewhere out in that, let's say, one acre to the east and north of the back of the Tunstall store, and we don't know where it is. And we probably will never know where it is. Now, I don't particularly understand how a lead-lined coffin works. Uh, I don't know if it's, I don't know what it's intended to preserve. I think you still have to embalm the body, um, maybe the lead is just to make it more structurally sound, but it sounds like it's more expensive and certainly more substantial than a pine box, which is probably what most of these other people uh, wound up getting buried in. Uh, and so the chances that the, that the, uh, the casket uh, of Tunstall is still there in relatively decent repair are much higher with his grave than with probably the other ones. And if you were to do ground penetrating radar, you might see a more delineated void where a Tunstall grave would be than where the other graves would be. Uh, John Miller is a case in point. When Steve Cedarwall, he didn't do any exhumation. He was just there. The state of Arizona did it. Uh, but when they did the exhumation of John Miller's grave, that grave had collapsed in on Miller's remains, um, the top of it. And, and Miller dies in 37. This uh, exhumation is done in 2005. So we're looking at 68 years, if my math is right. In only in less than 70 years, that wooden casket uh, collapses unto itself, which is what I would expect if you were ever to dig in the Sumner uh, the cemetery, you'd find there'd be essentially almost nothing left of, uh, you know, a, a, any sort of structural, uh, structural casket. But Tunstall's lead lined coffin, well, there could be something left of that. The whole thing could be there. Uh, I don't know how lead deteriorates over what's now a hundred in 45 years, over 145 years. Um, but it seems like that one would be easier to find. Yet, no marker, no official uh, recording of where that grave is. And somewhere out on that, uh, they call it Hell's Half Acre, right? But this is uh, Lincoln's <laughs> one full acre, roughly. Somewhere out there is John Henry Tunstall, the man who... Uh, whose death started the Lincoln County War. Now, I can think of a very similar reason why they may not have marked his graves and or marked his grave. And the reason in my mind is this is February 18, 1878. This is the first shot fired in the Lincoln County War. And one of the generals, you know, like the leader of one side is murdered. So it is a flashpoint. I could absolutely imagine Dolan's men going and digging that grave up and pulling Tunstall's body out and dragging it behind a horse back and forth. They showed 
when they when he was killed, Buck Morton, Jesse Evans, whoever was there, they showed that they had there was no sanctity in death to them. They either bashed Tunstall's face with the butt of a rifle, they shot his horse, and they laid him down next to his horse as though they were sleeping together to have a, a joke on his dead body. And so um, for certain, these guys have shown that there's no uh, there's no uh, respect at all for the dead. And so if, the, if he's buried somewhere, and the whole, the whole of Lincoln comes out for his burial— um, Jason asks, could Tunstall be buried amount around the murder site? No, he was brought to Lincoln. A number of people attended his funeral and he was buried there. So we know that we just don't know where it was, but I could imagine that people are, um, are, uh, you know, saying, Hey, you know, let's not make too big of a deal of this because those, <laughs> those bastards from, uh, the Dolan, uh, the Dolan gang will come down here and, and, uh, desecrate the grave. So we don't know where it is. And of course, in the day, Ben makes a good point. You know, in the day, it was a known grave. Absolutely. All of these were known. People were there. McSween was buried, had a funeral. Tunstall was buried and had a funeral. Delavina had a, some sort of funeral. I don't know if anybody came. Uh, and, and Ollinger, somebody must have been there for Ollinger. Somebody, one person must have stood up for Ollinger. Um, but those people are gone and whatever they knew seems to be gone as well. And so the number two lost to history grave in the story of Billy, the kid in the Lincoln County war is John Henry Tunstall. Um, if you go down to Lincoln and go to the back of the Tunstall store and you uh, look to the East and North, you're going to, you're going to see the ground he's buried under, but, just not uh, not going to happen. Oh, Colin has an interesting uh, uh, visual. I can imagine James Dolan walking out back of his store years later and kicking the hood, the wooden head uh, headboards over, insulting the dead man. Yeah, I could see Dolan doing that. I could absolutely see Dolan doing that. I mean, he he was Dolan had particular glee in the killing of about Billy Bonney. I mean, he went out of his way to help raise money and lead the charge for Garrett to be, uh, to be compensated well in excess of the 500 bucks that was offered by, uh, governor Wallace. So I could see Dolan doing that, kicking the boards over, taking him, throwing him in the, <laughs> throwing him in the river, burying them, but, you know, building a fire one night and laughing as he sipped a, uh, cognac or so. I don't know much about alcohol, but, <laughs> but he sipped a brandy or a whiskey or something as the uh, fire built and the uh, markers of his two enemies turned to nothing but dust. Lloyd says, <laughs> very simply, <laughs> Dolan was an ass hat. <laughs> That's a good one, Lloyd. I, I, I don't disagree with you. All right. The number one grave. Long lost and undiscovered in the Lincoln County War and the story of Billy the Kid. Who do you think it is? Uh, by the way, Nigel says, Nigel Pearson, that sounds like such a proper British name. I love it. Uh, could Dolan have dug him up and moved him? Sure, Dolan could have dug him up and pissed on him and, you know, burned his body. He could have done anything. We just don't know. There's no record of any of that. Um, but yeah, anything could have happened. All right. Uh, before I tell you what I think is the, uh, uh, the number one lost to history grave, I'm going to tell you it's probably two graves, but they are inexorably linked and intertwined. I'm interested who your number one is, but I would uh, but I'm going to tell you mine. But there's plenty of graves that of, of other people around Billy's story that are unmarked or not completely known where they might be. Uh, Bullyhead says Catherine's, and uh, that's a good one. That's definitely a good one, but that didn't make my list because she might be there. 
we don't know if she is for sure or not. But then again, you could go down that line of reasoning and say, we don't know if anybody's where they're supposed to be. But Catherine was buried in a known location. Supposedly, the person that bought the land had to move the bodies, the, the remains and the headstones. And, um, and, and we, we have to, we don't have to expect, but we can at least expect halfway that it's, that it's done. Joe Antrim, another good one. Uh, but, but no, that did not make my list at all. Uh, because at least as far as the, uh, uh, the uh, information we have, the Colorado medical college got his, uh, indigent body for dissection medical, uh, for medical students and the pieces would have been either put in a uh, put in a mass grave uh, or more more likely uh, incinerated. So I just I don't think that there's any grave to find for Joe Antrim. And if there was, it would probably be a bunch of body parts. There's a nose. Here's two legs. There's somebody's elbow. There's somebody's ass. You know, like <laughs> like those kind of things uh, from all different people. Now you could build. Uh, you could build a, uh, a, a, a from Dr. Frankenstein monster. No, but uh, if you think about uh, Billy's last days and you think about Fort Sumner, um, like where, where was um, or why was Billy still there? And the debate will rage on forever. You're never going to know. Um, but he could have been there for Nasaria Yerby, who uh, the Yerby Ranch was nearby. Maybe that was his sweetheart. And uh, she had a uh, a daughter that was commonly believed to have been fathered by Billy. Uh, could have been Abrana Garcia. Nasaria Yerby has uh, not been able to locate her grave or any record of it. Um, same thing with Abrana Garcia. No grave uh, that I can find. Uh, no, uh, no information on it. Celsa Gutierrez also no grave. And, um, so it could be now we know where Paulita Maxwell's grave is, or at least we know that she's in one of the four plots that are there at the Maxwell family, uh, plot. So of the, uh, and we've already talked about Delavina. So there's five potential, uh, paramours. Would that be the right word? For Billy Delavina, we've talked about Pauli. Do we know where she is? So you've got Abrana, Nasaria, and Celsa Gutierrez. Um, I do wonder if Celsa Gutierrez was only linked to Billy because that's who Paulita said when she interviewed when she was interviewed by Noble Burns. That's who she said he was with. Uh, I wonder if in the day there was more to it than that, but. Um, they're, again, wildly conflicting theories. But here's the thing. Knowing where any of those graves were, those women, would really mean nothing to the story of Billy the Kid. It, it wouldn't change anything. Um, you could add uh, Manuela Bowdry in there, who apparently moved back to Placidas, had six kids, and is buried somewhere back there in Placidas. Uh, but but knowing that where the graves of, of those women were, would not change a thing. It would be nice that they could be remembered. Uh, it would be nice that there could be some sort of memorial to them. And again, their place in history be cemented, but it wouldn't change anything in the story of Billy the Kid. But finding two graves would change it dramatically. Um, oh, here's a, I, I want to, draw out the anticipation. So Honeybee, great name. Where the heck was Paulita on the night Billy the Kid was killed? Just airbrushed out of history. No, she was right there. She was there. Um, she was in the house, apparently either sometime before or sometime after. Uh, Garrett questioned her and uh, Pete Maxwell. And it was said that she stood over his body almost emotionless. No, you know, no wailing or sobbing or anything like that. Uh, but she was right there in Fort Sumner. Was there more to it that, that, that she was involved in or or that uh, he was lured into? That could be, but we don't know. No, there's two graves that would absolutely, potentially, and positively help us move the story of Billy the Kid forward. Misty James says Billy's dad. Well, that's one that sure could help us, except we don't really have any idea who Billy's dad was. 
Um, oh, Misty James said, where was Paulita? She was putting her dress back on. <laughs> uh oh there you go bravo misty bravo here here's a toast to you <laughs> i like that uh and she may have been putting her dress on maybe she was in her night clothes and she decided to you know put a dress on so she'd be uh <laughs> she'd be dressed it is believed and robert uh mullen i've got the uh You can go look this stuff up um, from the Mull Robert Mullen collection research files. Uh, and uh, Maurice Garland Fulton also echo echoed these in his research in the Billy the Kid Binder Mullen collection. Uh, it is believed that Abrana Garcia had two young daughters that bore an amazing resemblance to Billy. And both of those daughters apparently died at a very young age from diphtheria. Right now we're in the middle of this, oh, you want DNA, you want proof, you want this, you want that. And there's no, as many people as uh, have said or claimed to be relatives of Billy the Kid, none of them have any real proof. But if you want real proof and you could find out where those two young girls were buried, and I would not be in favor of, you know, exhuming the, the, uh, the remains of two young girls, but that would give you the foundation to say, here is first generation at the time DNA of Billy Bonnie. And then you would be able to compare that to anything else you want. In fact, you'd be able to compare that to uh, any known DNA databases, and you'd be able to very quickly find out who was related to Billy, who he was or was not, um, and um, and uh, you know what his end was. Those two young ladies that passed so many years ago, early 1880s, would hold the key to what's going on now, which is an intensive DNA uh, search to try to figure out where, <laughs> where Billy's buried. I'm pretty sure I know where he's buried, but not everyone agrees. So the number one grave or graves that are lost to history, have never been found, are the two young girls, two young daughters of Abrana Garcia and maybe, maybe Billy Bonnie. And we're not ever, ever going to find them. And here's the thing. If you go to the Post Cemetery in Fort Sumner and you walk there, and many of you have been there, have seen it on video. Oops. Yeah, we're probably not going to answer that oh i think we may have a visitor hey guess who's here hey jake you want to be on camera come here buddy come here come here <laughs> you guys want to see jake let me see if i could do this without spilling something jakey come here buddy come here <laughs> he's running away now oh well he pushed his way in but he's not staying anyway um uh where was i so you you go to the cemetery there and you go, oh, okay, well, there's, there's like 20 markers in here. I mean, this thing is, it might be an acre in size, three quarters of an acre or something, but there's only like 20 or 25 markers where this isn't a cemetery. That place is wall to wall burials. And the, in fact, the, uh, uh Somebody really wants to talk to me. And in fact, the uh, area along the uh, western edge where the military burials were was reused after those were uh, disinterred and then reinterred up in the uh, National Cemetery in Santa Fe. And we know that, that I won't go into the, the boring details. So when every step you take, you're taking steps on the history of someone that 
either knew Billy the Kid or, or knew of someone who knew Billy the Kid. That graveyard is packed. It just doesn't look like it from the surface. Are those two young girls in there with their dad, Billy the Kid? Very possibly. Very, very possibly. Were we, are we ever going to find out where they are? Absolutely, positively, without reservation or hesitation, no. We are never, ever going to find that out. And so we can surmise here. We can, you know... Uh, we can you know, uh, think about it. We can talk about it. We can uh, uh, discuss it or argue about it, but we're never, ever going to know um, what happened to those two young girls or whether they were the offspring of Billy the Kid and if the DNA from them would tell us a lot more about the kid's final moments on Earth and where he wound up. So there we go. My top five lost to history graves of Billy the Kid in the Lincoln County War. Yours are different. You had some good ones. Catherine, Billy's father. Um, I don't know how many people care about uh, <laughs> about William Antrim. Joe, pos possibly in some mass grave somewhere. I'm not quite sure how that all um, <laughs> how that all works. Oh, Misty says update from the cemetery. They're ringing you with. Yeah, it was from Delaware which is about uh, 2000 miles from here. So I don't <laughs> probably, I don't, I don't think so, but Evie says it could be a voice from the graveyard. Well, that would have been interesting if I had answered it. And it was, it more likely was somebody that's been desperately trying to get in touch with me about my car's warranty. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. Um, all right. Uh, let's see what we've missed. La -da -dee, da -da, da -da -da. L. Bernstein wants to know, does anyone know the extent of Tunstall's wealth in today's money? Was he a million, multimillionaire? I don't know. I don't think so. Tunstall continually had to write home for more money to bankroll his operation. Um, I, I, well, it's not even certain. It's absolutely certain that he had uh, was not uh, in the black. He was definitely in the red with the cost of the ranch with the cost of paying his men to go on the war path, building the store, stocking the store, those kind of things. I mean, Tunstall was in some financial jeopardy and continued to lean on his father to bankroll his business. Um, uh, but I don't know how much, uh, how much he, uh, he had. I just don't know. Um, Ben says, eventually we all become fertilizers for the future. Yes, some of us sooner than others uh, post-mortem. Uh, that's me. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's the uh, cremation? Take the ashes, toss them out of the car. I don't care. I, I just don't care. I don't want to be, uh, I don't want any memorial. I don't want anything like that. Even if there was anyone to memorialize me, um, I just don't want any of that stuff. So there you go. All right. So uh, whatever's on your mind. Oh, we have 69 viewers. That's oh, now 70. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> but uh, there you go with that. So a couple of things to remember. Drew, our good buddy Drew, is back in the saddle and we want to make sure that uh, he stays there. So, yeah, if you've got an event or you think he's right for a, a specific uh, event that's uh, coming up, um, by all means, uh, get in touch with Brandon and, and he will get you in touch with Drew. Um, I want to thank all of you, all of you who have, la -da -dee -da -da. hang on a second, let me share something with you. La -da -dee -da -da -da. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Yes, I want to thank all of you that have purchased the new book in the Back to Billy series, The Ruins of Legend. Um, it's the number one seller. Uh, of my books from through my distributor for the reports I get. So thank you for that. But uh, interestingly enough, uh, the, uh, the, the, the second best selling book is back to Billy, the very first book in the series. This is book number eight. And it's been really uh, fun to see that books two and three are selling. So people are reading the first one and they going, Hey, I want more. And their books two and three are selling pretty well too. So thank you. For everybody that's read it, if you haven't, you can. Um, you can just go to uh, um, Amazon or Barnes & Noble or Goodreads or Abe Books or whatever the heck, anywhere you want, and uh, look for The Ruins of Legend, Book 8 in the Back to Billy Saga. There will be no Billy Palooza, but uh, it, there certainly was in this book, and boy, was it a hoot. <laughs> uh, a lot more happened than uh, we expected uh, to happen during uh 
<laughs> during Billy Palooza. Uh, all right. So that's that. July 14 uh, is a week, uh, it's two weeks from this Friday. We're getting down to uh, the July the 14th. It's, uh, it's going to be wild. Um, I want to let you know, I think it, it was Rollin, I'm sure, that said, hey, double check because uh, the, uh, the monument, the, where Billy's, where the Maxwell House marker and Billy's death marker are, that closes at 4 p.m. And so we don't want to get chased out of there again, especially at gunpoint. We don't want to have a Martin Teebs pulled on us either, where we go down there and wind up slipping back in time and getting, <laughs> getting shot next to Tom Folliard. But so what will need to happen is if you want to go back there, we'll need to meet by 3.30 at the uh, parking lot of the Chamber of Commerce and uh, in the cemetery. Um, and then about sunset, which is going to be somewhere right around 8 p.m. or so. So right, right around about that time, we're going to go on a tour through the cemetery. And I'm going to show you where all those graves are. I'm going to show you where Billy Barlow is buried. I'm going to show you how far the river is, the river that never washed away any graves. I'm going to take you on a historical tour through there. I'm going to show you where they tried to dredge a, uh, an irrigation channel through there and plant and make it into a cotton field back in the uh, 1950s. Yeah, it's just crazy stuff that went on for such a small plot of ground, yet somehow it survived all this time and it's a place you can, uh, you can manage. After that, I think uh, Brandon has been working on finding a local place that is can accommodate a group of us. We'll uh, go out to eat and uh, have some dinner and then we'll uh, uh, we'll do whatever but 11:30 or so we're going to head back to the cemetery and we're going to we're going to see if there's any messages there <laughs> i'm not a believer but if you are by all means get your special uh, ghost listening glasses or uh, <laughs> ear ear po airpods on and um, and listen away all right Okay, Jade Blue says, I'm just finishing book two, going to be ordering book three. Thank you, Jade Blue. That's so sweet of you. I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, book three was really supposed to be it. That was it. It was a trilogy. And you'll see at the end, you say, okay, I got it. It's it's over, except it's not. <laughs> it's It was over for a very short period of time. And then all of a sudden, it wasn't over. Winslow Red Cross, one of my favorite names. Too bad most of the 1890, 1890 census was lost in a fire. We could have learned much more about the people of Sumner and Lincoln County from that census. Yeah, lost in a fire. Who? Who? <laughs> Everything burned up, but paper and wood and those kind of things burn. And when there's no backup, um, then there's really not much you can do. Evie says, I think it's Evie. Is it Evie or Evie? I wonder, Evie would probably be E-V-Y. Evie would be E-V-E-Y because you'd, you'd have the long E sound by having that second E. So I'm going to go with Evie Rosslyn. Evie. Yes, I got it. I was right. Um, I got it. Thank you. I, I just had to work through it there, Evie. So Evie says you should hold a seance at Fort Sumner. I was warned not to do that by somebody. I was cautioned that that should not happen because bad things could come of it. Um, I'm not particularly worried about bad things coming of it. Um, but I also don't know anybody who had, uh, <laughs> you know, who puts on seances or anything like that. I think you can pretty much... Um, you know, open up your mind and your eyes and your ears. And if there's something to be heard or seen, I've seen some weird things in my life. I think we'll probably see it. I think we'll, uh, I, I, I think whatever will is supposed to happen will happen. I think it'll be nothing, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I thought nothing was going on at the first house I bought in Albuquerque until I saw a guy, you know, I woke up in the middle of the night and saw a guy dressed in white with a big beard walk right toward my bedroom, turn a corner and go down toward my infant daughter's my, my daughter Mia's room. And I freaked out and jumped out and ran after him and, and didn't see anything. So, uh, yeah. Oh, Evie seems to know what she's doing because she said that nothing bad will happen. If you create a circle of protection, is that like the circle of trust with from, uh, the, uh, meet the Fockers or, uh, whatever that movie is. 
Um, yeah, I don't know how to do any of that. I don't know how to create a circle of protection or dissection or reflection or anything, uh, anything uh, at all about that. Uh, I, I was offered, <laughs> I was offered by one of our viewers that they would come down and, and uh, serve in that capacity for like $2,000 or something. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, Rollin says, I think if anything is going to happen in the cemetery that night, it will be as random as Martin Teeb's transition between centuries. Yeah, it'll just kind of happen. Might could happen any other day, any other time, or it could happen that night. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happens after we die. I think we turn to dirt and worms eat us, but I don't know. Maybe your spirit goes on or maybe it hangs around where you should be. Um, and, uh, and, and, and maybe you get to cross over and, uh, and, and, talk to people now and again if, if billy wants to talk i'm i'm all ears uh jade says i should be done with the whole series the back to billy series by the end of this hurricane season well that's good um yeah, yeah that's very cool uh jason wants to know do we need to be put on a list to go july 14 no there's no list and um, this is just you know show up and and do your thing but um it would be nice to know who's coming uh, especially if we're you know trying to get a table for dinner and so we know you know, kind of to wait for you, but we'll have a, uh, we'll have a little bit of a, a discussion uh, on before the, the 14th and, you know, communicate via email, just to make sure that everybody's got whoever's contact information they need. And so there you go. Oh, Rollins got a great idea. Maybe we all get transported to 142 years ago. That would be, that would be epic. Now I would not like to see somebody killed like that's not high on my list i've seen people die in front of me but i've never seen anyone murdered in front of me that would not be high on my list but if you want to know really what happened you would have to see that you'd have to see it you'd have to be in the peach orchard and see if anybody's you know <laughs> and then you'd have to hop the wall and follow garrett and his deputies in and you'd have to, you know, stake yourself out on the porch of the Maxwell house and see Billy walk in or not. Or maybe it's Billy Barlow or maybe it's uh, Bozo the Clown. I don't know. Um, you'd have to see all those things. But, um, yeah, I mean, if we get transported back 142 years, um, it's going to be why I hope somebody has an iPhone that has <laughs> the battery charge. We can take some video and photos and audio and do some interviews right after and bring that back here. And then we can solve this, uh, this lingering question once and for all. So there you go. Uh, Misty seems to know more about this too. Even if they do it wrong, we'll have to sage them. Um, wow. Well, you all have a, you, you all have a language. I just don't understand. I don't, uh, I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't traffic in that world, but if you do come on down July 14, the old post cemetery in Fort Sumner and we'll, uh, we'll see what we see. All right, gang. So here's what's going on. Uh, we'll, I'll see you in two weeks, two weeks from tonight, uh, on the next live Monday show. If you've got anything, show ideas or anything you want to share, please feel free to, uh, send it to Billy, the kid rides again at gmail.com. Uh, one of the things you could do is hit the like button on this video. That would be uh, terrific. Um, yeah, the more likes, the higher it rises in the rankings of what is shared out to other people who have similar interests. And, uh, and if you're so inclined, you can become a channel member. And that's where the investigative videos are going. Uh, we're getting averaging about one a week now. Uh, but by all means, you, uh, uh, you can uh, just hit the join button and uh, and become a member and get uh, all those videos. And you can see all the old ones as well. Jade Blue says, I really wish I could, guys. But if somebody wants to drive me, you have to pick me up in Florida. My van's ready. Um, okay, is a little out of the way for me to drive from Albuquerque to, <laughs> to Florida to Fort Sumner. But maybe we could, uh, maybe we could do that. Um <laughs> Oh, Misty says, take Billy and Uzi and a bulletproof vest if you go back. Well, I, we won't know if we're going back. So I guess that you're saying I have to bring an Uzi and a bulletproof vest with me just in case. Um, ben says we could all meet up and put on a pot of Maxwell House coffee and a big confab. We could. We should drink Maxwell House coffee somewhere around midnight um, just to, uh, I don't know, deepen the experience. And I don't think Maxwell House is very good coffee. And I do like 
strong black coffee, but I'll, I'll sacrifice myself on this one to drink that stuff. Maybe I'll have to make a thermos of it and we can all have a little, <laughs> a little coffee shot, uh, to, uh, <laughs> to uh, memorialize the Maxwell's, um, there you go. All right. If you got any last minute things, now's the time gang. We're a minute and f or an hour and four minutes into this, uh, uh escapade. <laughs> Um, the things to remember are get book your tour with uh, book your tour with Brandon. Yeah, get yourself down to Lincoln. Go see uh, go see the sites. Go see it. look the way the way the state of New Mexico is going with preserving these things. They might not be there at some point in the future. So go now. <laughs> Just make sure you see it. Take pictures. And heck, if you know where the grave is of somebody, write it down. You know, put it. Post it on Facebook where future generations can find it. I don't want a hundred years from now somebody go, oh, look at this moron on YouTube was talking about all these graves and he never said where they were and now we can't find them anymore. So uh, go do that. Um, if you uh, if you uh, would like to book Drew for your, uh, hey, you can book him for a party. He could come like an old West party or Billy the Kid party. I think that would be cool. Go get the ruins of legend. And uh, I think... Uh, I think that's about it so thank you so much for joining me for this all things billy the kid live and uh can't wait to see you all in two weeks until then be good